The ripple in the sky is closing rapidly, and Scott predicts it will be gone by nightfall. The survivors have to find a way to fix the plane, as soon as they can, to fly back into the future. Gavin, Rebecca, and Izzy are still in the modern version of the settlement. They are informed of an astonishing discovery. The wreckage of Levy's airplane has been found underground, which was not there earlier. Moreover, there are dead bodies around the plane. This means the group is about to try to fly it back home but die in the process. To save their life, Gavin has to somehow send them a message, asking them not to fly the plane. Suddenly, a group of soldiers, led by Adam, arrest them for conducting the search illegally. The High Command has planned to end all rescue missions, which means they won't be allowed to fly into the sinkhole to rescue their family. Sometime later, Sophie manages to get Gavin and Diana out of custody. They have to get to the plane and launch, before they are found and arrested again. In the meantime, Levy is constantly trying to fix the radio to make a connection with the future. To his surprise, he gets a reply back from someone like them, stuck in Santa Monica. Levy and Eve set off to look for the person, hopeful that they have an answer about how to get back home. A man named Tony has fixed a jeep, which is helpful since they do not have much time before the ripple disappears. When they reach the beach the next morning, a woman points a gun at them. After calming down, she reveals that her name is Diana. She was a crew member of the sinkhole exploration team that came here three years ago. Not just that, but she is Sophia's fiance and has been dying to see her for the past three years. The dead body Levy and Eve found in the civilization belonged to Diana's partner, who went to look for the wreckage when they fell. Diana is also a mechanic, and their plane wreckage from three years ago has the spare parts that Levy needs to fix his aircraft. They finally have hope that they can return home before the ripple disappears. A while later, Lily wakes up and tells Ty that Veronica was also kidnapped by their father. She doesn't think she is a bad person and wants her back. Ty understands her concern and decides to go looking for Veronica later. Then, the group selects the name of people who will get on board the first flight. Once the plane is fixed, Josh and Lucas are also selected much to the relief of their mothers. Before leaving, Lucas has to get his stash, so he and Scott go into the woods looking for the spot where he buried them. They do not find it anywhere, but come across a chest filled with blocks of gold. It is from the American Civil War, which means someone from another past has also landed here, presumably through a ripple. Suddenly, a drone falls from the sky and lands a few miles away. When they check the wreckage, they find a message from Gavin. It asks them to avoid boarding Levy's plane at all costs because they have seen the future, and the plane is bound to crash. Eve and Meribeth want to follow the orders, but the others are so desperate to return home that they are willing to take the risk. Eve tries her best to convince them, but when they refuse to listen, she and Meribeth take things further. They hold Levy and Diana at gunpoint, refusing to let them fly the airplane. Suddenly, Diana loses her mind and fires back, setting fire to the plane's fuel tank. In retaliation, Meribeth also shoots her. They quickly carry her to the camp, but she doesn't survive the gunshot. Eve and Meribeth are blamed for the death and for destroying the plane. But Eve still has hope that her husband will come to their rescue. Somewhere else, Ty finds Veronica praying at her kidnapper's grave. She promises to return to the camp, but when Ty is not looking, she knocks him out and runs away. Veronica is scared that she will be arrested for kidnapping Lily if they return home. Back in the present, Adam and his team come to the airbase looking for Gavin. Izzy and Sophie distract them, while Gavin and Rebecca take off towards the sinkhole. They are minutes away from going in, when Adam gets into the radio with them and threatens to launch an attack. If Gavin dies, Izzy will have no one left in life. Hence, he decides to abort the mission. Rebecca, however, is not willing to give up. She surprises Gavin by jumping off the plane and into the sinkhole. Everyone watches the sky as the ripple disappears, confirming that they are trapped. When they lose hope, Scott shows them the bars of gold. Since they are from the 1,800 seconds, he thinks the world consists of more ripples. They just have to find them to return to their time. It makes people feel a little better. After everything that happened, the following morning, Meribeth is asked to hand over the gun. No one in the camp feels safe after Diana's death. Not just that, but the people rile up and vote for Meribeth and Eve to be exiled from the camp. Both Josh and Lucas vote in favor of the exile, furious at their mothers for what they did. Meanwhile, Gavin is yet again arrested and made to sign an NDA. He can now never talk about the sinkhole and the survivors to anyone without getting punished. The punishment could have been worse, but the High Command has decided to let him off the hook this time. Gavin then meets Sophie. He reveals that before jumping off, Rebecca asked him to remember the day it all started. 1988, November 6th. It was around the day Gavin was adopted by his family. He thinks the visions he is having are related to his birth, 
Hence, he will get the answers when he finds out who his real family is. Sophie does some digging for him and discovers the address of the church that gave him over to the CPS. They go to the said church and meet an old woman who remembers Gavin. She reveals that he wasn't alone when he was found. There was a 12-year-old girl walking down the street with him. They didn't remember anything not even their names, so the church handed them over to CPS. Gavin is shocked because he doesn't remember being with a girl at all. Sophie takes the responsibility to find out where the girl is now. Back in the past, Ty, who is still injured, is saved by a native named Para. She brings him to a cave and stitches his injury. She is also the leader of the tribe that attacked Eve and the group yesterday. By talking to her, Ty realizes the natives are not bad people. They are just scared of the intruders. Moreover, Para reveals that the Sky People have been coming to their land for several years. This means the ripple can form at any place, and at any time. Suddenly, the place is hit by an aggressive snowstorm. In this age of the Earth, modern Dela goes through several intense climate changes, so it is best for everyone to take shelter. Eve and Meribeth are packing up to leave the camp. Suddenly, Meribeth sees a pole about to fall on a cave that Lucas is in. While trying to save his life, both of them are stuck inside. Although the two do not have an ideal relationship, Marbeth loves her son to death and would do anything for him. Outside, even the others try to help them, but any sudden push on the stones might make them fall on the mother and son. Sam comes up with an idea to make an IED using gunpowder. That way, they can blast a part of the wall and bring the two outside. Although they might get hurt in the process, the group is willing to take the risk. They initiate the plan a while later and ask Meribeth and Lucas to stay as far from the wall as possible. The plan works, and the two are finally rescued. The survivors realize that Eve is an asset to their group, hence she and Meribeth are allowed to stay in the camp. Similarly, Ty and Para also wish farewell to each other after the storm. Meanwhile, Gavin and Sophie discover the girl Gavin was found with in his childhood is named Ella. She is an artist who lives a few miles away from them. They go to visit the woman, but find her gallery empty. Gavin is surprised by the most recent structure Ella created the print of a hand made up of stones. Somewhere else, Izzy meets Sam's son Andrew in school. The two bond over the shared loss of people in the sinkhole. After the storm, the mushroom supply of the camp is destroyed. More such storms will come in the future, which is bound to make their life difficult. If they want to survive, the group will have to use the land to farm. Suddenly, Lily notices someone running away from the camp and alerts everyone. They go running after the person and find out it is a kid, the same one who helped Eve and Levy when they were trapped in the fort. He introduces himself as Isaiah, and claims that he means no harm. They bring him back to the camp and dress an injury on his palm. Lily and Isaiah make friends with each other, because Isaiah doesn't really have one back home. Eve suggests they take the kid back to his tribe and maintain a diplomatic relationship with them. That way they can learn to farm and build houses from the locals. She, Levi, Isaiah, and Ty make their way to the fort on the jeep. On the way, the kid reveals that he has been watching them since they got here. He saw Eve falling, her reuniting with her son, and everything else. This is how he knew they weren't bad people when they were trapped inside the fort. When asked why he was watching them all this time, Isaiah says that it was an instinct. He wanted to make sure they weren't hurt. Suddenly, their jeep is surrounded by a bunch of natives. They bring them to the tribe and in front of their leader Para. Isaiah's grandfather Silas is enraged that his boy was put at risk. But when Para finds out that they were taking care of him, she is thankful. Eve asks the tribe to teach her group about hunting, farming, and building. She wants to maintain a peaceful relationship with the tribe. And Para is in favor of it. She shows them the farmland and promises to send some men to teach them how to grow crops. Para also reveals that the first visible ripple happened about 60 years ago, and the people who arrived were violent. The tribe got into a war with them which ended many lives. They eventually merged in the end sharing culture and languages. This is why Para wants to maintain a diplomatic relationship with the group. The three join the tribe for lunch, but Levy seems to be worried about something the entire time. It turns out that he suspects Silas to be the murderer who has been killing people in the camp. Hence, when no one is around, he goes to check Silas's chamber. Back in the camp, Veronica is caught trying to lure Lily away. When she refuses to cooperate, Sam drags her into a car and handcuffs her to the steering wheel. A few hours later, she has a hard time breathing and is led outside the car to rest. In the meantime, Levy finds the ID card of the guy who died a few days ago. Enraged, he calls out Silas in front of everyone. The man defends himself, saying that the guy was already dead when he got there. Hara confirms this because she, too, 
found a similar dead body in the woods. Suddenly, they are informed that someone has kidnapped Isaiah. Everyone disperses and separates into groups of two to cover more ground. Silas eventually finds his grandson being taken away by none other than Rebecca. He somehow knows her name and asks her to hand Isaiah back. Rebecca insists that the kid has a purpose in life that he must fulfill. Silas seems to understand what she is talking about, but he stabs her and brings Isaiah away. She is found injured by Eve and Levi, who bring her to the tribe to save her life. Meanwhile, Isaiah is with Silas, who wants the two of them to run far away from human civilization. The kid is in shock, because Rebecca told him that his real name is Gavin, and he is from the future. In the future, Gavin, Sophie, and Izzy discover Ella's address and go to meet her. Even though she has been avoiding them continuously, they find a buried sinkhole in her yard. Suddenly, Gavin gets a vision from Isaiah's perspective. The wound on Isaiah's hand leaves a scar that Gavin also has. This means that Isaiah and Gavin are the same people, from two different timelines. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.